One of the things that, that really amazes me too is when St. John the Apostle appeared to her, she would be kneeling, looking straight, you know, where St. John was, and then she would like, you know, move her hand to, to let someone know she needed like a pen and paper. And I remember Soledad would put a legal pad, a regular eight and a half by 11 legal pad and a pen, and she was looking at, straight ahead at St. John, and she was writing like this, and from the top to the bottom, the whole page was written in ancient Greek. And the lines were straight, too, which is amazing. Because if you tried to do that, you know, write in your, your native language, whatever it is, I'm English, it would, you know, you, the lines would go up and down and all. When I was writing uh, what he wants me to, you know, because I knew that I was writing, you know, it's like whenever I see him, uh, he's there, and then I see these uh, characters, you know, I cannot, uh, just, I just follow. Even it's like this, you know. Emma would be able to write looking up or down with her eyes closed. Incidentally, when on several occasions her eyes were checked and eyelids forced open, only the whites of her eyes were seen. In December 2006, on the Mountain of Salvation, Emma again received a message similar to the ones we just described. We suggested that the message be shown to biblical scholar Father Renato Lopez. When I read the first line, which says, Agapitoi me panti pneumati pistiumete, I knew immediately that this would come only from the first letter of uh, St. John. The Greek of the Bible, which is uh, so-called koine, meaning to say the popular Greek of the time of Jesus and of the apostles. It is not classical Greek, but it is koine Greek. It is text of St. John. All right. There's no doubt about it. It tells us to distinguish spir spirits because not every spirit is true. See, it tells us that every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ is a true spirit, whereas those that do not acknowledge Jesus Christ are not true spirits. When asked where one could have access to this text and if it would be possible to memorize something like this, Father Lopez replied. One can copy from the text of the Bible, the New Testament. But you can see immediately from the writing that the one who wrote this did not actually know Greek. Because, for one, there are no accents. Second, there are no punctuations. And the, the letters are not very clear. For example, uh, the letter N and the letter U are written almost in the same way. So it cannot be from one who knows Greek, not even the script itself. It's like one who writes normally in Chinese would copy uh, a script that is written in uh, our script, the Roman script, without knowing how to write A or B or C, something like that happens here. We asked him what he thought. <sighs> I don't know. I, have, I don't know how the text was produced. I don't know how the text originated. I don't know who wrote it. I just knew uh, by reading simply a few words of the text that this could come only from the Bible. It is evident, you know, from the first verse that this could come only from the Bible. I wondered how, you know, this could be produced without actually looking at the text. Because if you ask me to actively write in Greek, I cannot. You know, it's like if you dictated to me, I will be able to write that because I can hear and I know the, the Greek phonetics, so I can write that down. But to write from memory is very difficult for me, even if I knew the text of the Bible. I felt like uh, either one, 
is copying from a text or has an extraordinarily good memory to be able to write this from memory or a third explanation could only be supernatural but I don't know how the text was produced I can only read it in the previous segments, we reported that the phenomena surrounding Emma's journey would equal, if not rival, the manifestations given to many famous visionaries of the last century. While the ones that we have already presented to you like the glitter, the oil, the stigmata, the passion, and the writing in foreign languages may seem amazing, there's still more. Those praying around her have often reported that while in a trance, they have seen her receive what seemed to them to be manifestations of heaven. She would wake from her trance holding strange flowers or rocks that seemed to be flecked with gold, and even what she said was an angel's feather which, astonishingly, seems to have lengthened over time. And, upon close inspection, a tiny new feather appears to have developed at its base. There were even several gemstones that had fallen from her head, one of which is even thought to be a rough diamond. These all have been recorded, carefully kept, and stored for safekeeping. Well, they were all, remember on the floor, they, they were falling, they, they popped out of, out of Emma's head, came the stones, and I, I can't recall how many there were. There was, there was quite a few that had fell, they had fell on the, on the, on the, on the carpet, and Emma saw that picked them up, and everybody was so excited, so they all got up and everybody wanted to see them, she was showing them and showing them. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at Emma, and while I was looking at her, I started to look at her forehead, and a bulge was coming on her forehead. And I just raised myself up and I started to walk over and I wanted to touch it. So I reached out and I got maybe that far from her head. Just as I went to do that, pop, it popped right out and onto the floor. What an experience. It seems that she not only reads souls, but sees them as well. Another great mystic of the last century, Padre Pio, now saint, would recount how departed souls would show themselves to him and report that they had been given permission by God to approach him and ask for prayers. Astounding as this may seem, Emma claims to have had such encounters. She claims that a Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, a nun in her early twenties, had come and brought her souls in purgatory to pray for. She appeared to me and she said, you know, she's, uh, she was wearing also the brown habit uh, and uh, she told me that she become a, you know, she introduced herself to me. Her name is uh, Magdalene uh, Pace Italy and uh, she uh, was a nun when she was uh, in early 20, something like that. God has given her the grace, you know, to bring, to come back, you know, and uh, speak to me. To, uh, to talk about the, uh, the souls in purgatory, that uh, we have to pray the souls in purgatory. Pat Brady recounts what she witnessed one Lenten season. She was a very uh, grayish color, and she was shaking. Her whole body was shaking. Her eyes were closed, and she started to call out names. Like, for example, Maria, 1842. And then she would call out another name, who are you, or say, who are you? And another name of a different person in a different year would come. And this went on for about uh, 10 minutes. And uh, then Emma was silent. And uh, her color started to come back. She said, Saul, I saw people. People, I heard people calling me. And they, they asked for prayers and they were asking for help. Them and I also experienced uh, to meet this uh, soul. Uh, the name was uh, 
Mariano Rivera, and he told me that he died in 1631. He said to me, I came to you to ask for the prayers that one day I will be in heaven. After the Holy Week, and I became, came back from myself with all the passions, and I woke up, you know, I saw him that he was with uh, Saint Mary Magdalene de Pass. 